uh, thank you for the introduction. I'm uh, Martin. As you could see before from the agenda, I work in Zero Turnaround. I'm actually product manager of our internal services and operations. So this is uh, the team that is serving our Java developers uh, uh, so that they can uh, produce the products that we actually sell. But uh, this is not what I wanted to talk about today. Today it's bird and birds and bees, and I actually really like those birds and bees. And you know, if there's no uh, birds and no bees, then uh, the world will uh, die soon. But uh, this is uh, really not also what I wanted to talk about. This is just a short introduction. I actually wanted to talk about uh, how I got into brewing uh, shortly and, uh, and about craft brewing itself. Uh, but firstly, uh, as I got into craft brewing through my father-in-law and we have Movember and just wanted to uh, point out that uh, prostate cancer is a really, really bad issue and my father-in-law is uh, struggling with it. So if you have uh, relatives or friends, uh, males over, uh, over the age of 50, then please ask them to go uh, check themselves out. Uh, Prostate, prostate cancer is non-lethal if uh, discovered early enough. Uh, but that's the only commercial uh, thing. So let's get to brewing. So beer. Uh, how do we get beer? We take uh, cereals, uh, we ferment them, and, and uh, the result is, is beer. And if we talk about craft beer, then uh, craft beer is all about craftsmanship. Uh, craft beer is uh, quality over quantity. Of course, some people are also not so good with regulating the quantity, like myself. But <laughs> craft beer, nevertheless, has come and is probably not going away. So, what do, uh, what kind of uh, cereals do we use for beer? Feel free to speak up. It's an interactive session. Wheat. Wheat. Yes, wheat. Anything else you know? Water. Dry. Yes. Water. I mean uh, the cereals first, but sure, yeah. Water is also a really good, uh, really important ingredient. Oat, maybe. Yes, oats are used uh, usually for uh, stronger beers to soften them a little, but. Uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, we talked about water, uh, also there are hops, and, and the last part is yeast, and kind of jumped a little bit forward, but uh, yeah, barley is actually the main, uh, main cereal, uh, like around 80% uh, of beers are made out of only, only, only barley. But also there are corn beers, uh, rice beers in, in Asia, so all sorts of different, different beers. Hops. Uh, hops uh, give beer its uh, bittering taste. They also give uh, beer its uh, specific aroma. Uh, hops are mainly divided into uh, two uh, different branches, the European uh, hops and the American hops. Uh, the European, uh, so to say, classical hops are more uh, stronger on, on the alpha, alpha oils, uh, alpha acids and, and oils uh, in them. So they, they help uh, bitter the beer better, but uh, when craft brewing took off in America, then uh, they started uh, crossbreeding uh, different hop uh, plants to get uh, 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 more stronger, uh, uh, even more stronger tasting, and, and uh, like different uh, different hops that produce more aroma. And uh, usually, if we talk about uh, hops, then at some point, uh, people uh, brewers started putting uh, hops also into beer uh, in their dry form. Uh, this is usually done with uh, American hops, and this gives uh, beer a really good. Uh, uh, aroma and, and smell. Uh, yeasts. Uh, yeast is uh, uh, actually 
well, you can't say what is the main ingredient. You need all, all four uh, different ingredients. Yeast is, yeast is the small uh, uh, fungus uh, kingdom uh, microorganism that is actually dissolving the sugars in the wort. Uh, yeast is producing alcohol and CO2. Uh, there are very many different sorts of yeasts. So for all different types of beer, uh, uh, different yeasts are used. This is also done through uh, crossbreeding different uh, different yeasts. But the main differentiation between yeasts is uh, uh, between top fermenting and bottom fermenting uh, uh, yeasts. So Estonia and uh, countries around us are mostly used to lager type of beers, you know, like Sako Original, Alekok Premium, uh, most of Estonian uh, classical beers that we used to have are uh, bottom fermented. Uh, they are lager type of beers. A lager type of beer has to be uh, brewed in a colder temperature. And all the other beers that you know, there are like very, very many different uh, types, are used, are, are brewed with a yeast. So top fermenting, that means that the fermentation process of the beer is done on top of the liquid. Uh, so, question. yes. So does it mean that bottom fermentation happens because yeast is uh, heavier than the liquid itself? So it like, uh, yes, yeast settles down and the actual process with those uh, lager type of yeasts happens uh, in the bottom of the fermentation tank. Uh, how come then uh, uh, that in ale and pale ale type of beers, mm -hmm. if they're craft brewed, we can see that... Uh, the sediment at the bottom. Yeah. Uh, when yeast dies uh, together, uh, I mean most of it is yeast, but there are also some dead proteins and, and things like that. So when it dies, it falls to the bottom. But as long as it's active, uh, the yeast yeast is keeping itself on top of the uh, uh, fermentation tank, on top of the liquid, and, and the fermentation magic happens there. Uh, so we kind of already covered that uh, this uh, dangerous dihydroxen monoxide is also a really uh, important ingredient as well. Uh, as long as the water is drinkable, it's uh, actually good enough for uh, craft brewing. You don't have to do anything fancy like filter it or uh, boil it at first. Even the pH uh, levels of uh, the water in inserted into the mash is, is not that uh, important. What is a little bit more important is that if there are uh, really many uh, minerals in the water, like you, you, you actually take the mineral water that they sell in bottles, then occasionally if there are too many minerals, then this leaves uh, some side tastes that, that are usually not uh, welcome in, in craft brews. So just if you want to go ahead with it, just uh, use regular tap water, at least in Tallinn it's good enough. But otherwise, yeah, just if it's drinkable, then it's already good enough. Just quickly about the process itself. So first you take the cereals, uh, usually barley, you uh, mill them. Uh, so basically you crush them. Uh, the perfect uh, crush is so that one grain of barley is uh, uh, split into three particles. Otherwise, if it's too too much dusty or like, like dust, it will uh, stick into the filters and you can't uh, get it out of the mesh later. Oh, sorry. Uh, actually, malting is the first thing you do. So if you take uh, any kind of cereal, at first it doesn't have too many uh, uh, sugars in it. So what is first done is that those uh, the grain is taken, uh, added to a, uh, this is taken to a moist place where it starts to grow. So if a small uh, like seed, uh, if the small uh, like seedling is growing out of the seed. Uh, then uh, the grain uh, is taken to a dry place and dried. So the moment it starts growing, uh, then it produces uh, really, really many uh, enzymes and, and lots of starch, terklis. Uh, and uh, this is what gives uh, beer its uh, sweetness. Uh, and, and the sweetness is uh, uh, later consumed uh, uh, 
First, it's washed out of the grain uh, in a process called mashing. So basically, you add uh, the grain to hot water. You have to control the temperature of the hot water. Uh, if you have it lower, then you get more simplis simplistic uh, starch uh, uh, strains out of the out of the grain. If you uh, uh, mash with higher temperatures, then you get more complex uh, starch uh, strains. Uh, later, uh, lottering is just uh, kind of uh, rinsing the grain once ag once again to just get the final uh, sugars. I mean, starch out of the out of the grain. Uh, so before we get to actual fermentation, uh, usually the mash or the uh, liquid uh, that has that the sweet liquid is uh, brought to a boil to kill off uh, many proteins and other unwanted uh, elements and during the boiling also hops are added so the longer you uh, add the longer you boil the hops uh, the more bitter the wort will get and the beer will uh, be in the end so uh, Yes. Uh, this IBU level is regulated basically by, by, by how long do you... Boil? Yes, it's regulated mostly by how much you add uh, the hops into the wort and how much exposure do they have. So uh, usually uh, a 90 minute boil is uh, done for uh, uh, bittering the wort or bittering the beer. Uh, and uh, at last stages of boiling, like five minutes before you end the boil or even like two minutes before you end the boil, you add the hops that you want to uh, uh, give the aroma to the beer. So some of the hops are only boiled for a couple of minutes and during that uh, small exposure they uh, give out their uh, uh, alpha acids but those alpha acids are not uh, breaking down so that they don't uh, form the bitterness. Uh, well, after the boil, you need to cool the wort down, add the yeast, and uh, what the yeast does is uh, the yeast uh, during, uh, sorry, <laughs> jumping again, uh, during the mashing, the starch in the grain gets broken down into uh, different sugars. So uh, there are also simple sugars like, uh, yeah, okay, I don't know the English names, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Anyhow, there are uh, maltose and uh, dextrose and things. These are sim simple sugar elements and these are the first uh, things that uh, during fermentation the yeast will actually eat up. And the really complex sugars, uh, uh, those the yeast usually even can't consume. And those give uh, the actual sweetness, sweet taste <coughs> to the beer. So if you uh, boil the beer or the grains at a low temperature, then most of it is going to be consumed and produced into alcohol and CO2. If you uh, boil the grains on a really high temperature, uh, you, don't, you never exceed 80 degrees, uh, otherwise uh, the starch will just start breaking down during the mesh. But, uh, uh, but the more complex uh, uh, sugars then give this uh, sweet taste and also yeah, okay, I'm not uh, last stage uh, then uh, whoever wants to drink uh, the beer from bottles you do bottling or canning uh, some people uh, put it into cakes uh, home brewers usually uh, uh, fer sorry uh, carbonize their beers uh, in a natural uh, classic way so that they add a little sugar before uh, bottling and close the bottles and keep them in a warm room so the fermentation process starts up again and uh, that's why a lot of those uh, home brews or craft brews have the sediment on the bottom because the yeast activates again and after it dies it falls to the bottom uh, the yeasts nowadays are uh, quite good in settling down and it actually makes a quite sticky uh, layer so that it's not that easy to get it uh, up again, but if you use this uh, baking yeast uh, that can also be used occasionally, then this one uh, is really, really uh, like... Uh, you can uh, wash it up really easily from the bottom, and uh, so it's not uh, that uh, like well settled. 
But the other way uh, of uh, uh, carbonizing the beer is just adding uh, CO2 forcefully. This is how the big breweries do that. That's how they keep their uh, beer clean. Uh, they uh, kill the beer, so to say. Uh, well, kill the yeast in the beer, filter it, uh, and then uh, just add CO2 forcefully. And during uh, uh, the aging process, or just uh, while the beer stands in some uh, warehouses, then the forcefully added CO2 will just uh, dissolve into the into the beer itself. So, how many beer types? Can I get some beer types, styles? Lager. Lager, yes, we have one. <laughs> Pilsner. Yep, Pilsner is like subtype of lager, but uh, true. Yes? Ale. Ale. Yeah, ale is this, this big and it has so many small uh, subtypes. Well, I guess you are not too much into uh, different styles of beers, or you are just too timid before handing out the beers. This is the styles according to rate beer. The, anyhow, these are all lagers, these are all wheats. My kind of uh, favorite uh, style, not to drink, but because of the style itself, is, is a style called Lambic. It's uh, a different type of beer where you uh, ferment the beer not uh, with yeast, not only with yeast, some yeast is also added, but maltolactic acids. The same things that uh, produce kefir from uh, milk and, and uh, sour cream and so these beers get really really sour taste and uh, very often um, I don't know where, yeah they are on the sour beer section here but so these are different types of lambics very often they add uh, like uh, cherry syrup or, or uh, raspberry syrup or something like that to counter the really really sour taste. But uh, the weird thing about those lambic beers is that uh, while lager usually ferments like, I don't know, two weeks, three weeks in a commercial environment and, and you can ferment an ale uh, with uh, less than one week, then these lambic beers ferment uh, a year and a half. So the, lambic, the maltolactic acids uh, just take so much uh, longer time to consume the sugar uh, and produce the CO2 and, uh, and uh, alcohol. There's just uh, one or two uh, those maltolactic acids that actually eat sugar and produce uh, the same things as yeast, CO2 and alcohol. Most of them just uh, produce this uh, uh, lactic acid uh, that's in, in milk. So at home, brewing. A uh, really easy start is to just uh, take a beer kit from any of the brewing shops. Uh, you just take a can like this get a big bucket, pour the can into the bucket, add water. There is also a small package of yeast uh, next to the, uh, the can usually. Don't use that, don't ever use that. I've tried it like uh, two or three times now, I think three times, and every time it has failed to uh, actually start the fermentation process uh, correctly. So whenever you get a can from a brewing shop, then uh, just get one of the fresh yeasts. These cans usually have uh, expiration date like three years or something, but uh, the yeast uh, actually is not alive that long. But other than that, add everything to the bucket, close the lid, and well, I do some measurements, uh, but you can do without. After some time, you just need the bottles, and it's really easy. But we also do it at work. I have some uh, colleagues here. Uh, we are going tomorrow on a field trip. Uh, we brewed uh, these two <laughs> weird brews uh, for tomorrow. You can taste them today after my talk. Uh, we did uh, do the brewing also in spring for uh, an event we held. Uh, uh, Java conference called Geek Out every year, and for this year's Geek Out, uh, we brewed. We had a brew of uh, Tallinn versus Start Office. There was some mix-up and I had to brew both of them. Usually it was supposed to be so that my boss Tom uh, will brew the Tartu beer and I will brew the Tallinn beer and then we are going to have the 
uh, blind tasting at Kikout. So we got our international uh, speakers uh, and a few people from the crowd together around the tables and did some blind testing. Uh, we put Tallinn beer and Tartu beer against two of Estonian uh, craft brews. It was blind tasting and uh, Tallinn beer actually won. <laughs> Surprisingly. <laughs> and uh, now that we did our uh, next brews, then we tried to uh, like twist it even further. So um, maybe today's pears are like not that uh, easy to drink, but they will definitely uh, uh, blow your mind in a sense uh, a little bit. But be prepared that you won't maybe like them and be prepared to just take a small uh, sip at first. And just wanted to also make uh, another commercial uh, kind of uh, announcement. Uh, there is this really cool app called Untapped. Uh, I added our brewery there. So uh, in case you are already familiar with that and try our beers, do check those in, please. Uh, if you are not familiar that, with that and do want to uh, start uh, writing down or marking down for yourself what apps, uh, what, what beers you have had, then uh, this is a really nice app to use. I am not related to that app in any other way than I just entered our zero turnaround around beers here. Uh, so uh, enough with the commercials. But all the Estonian small uh, breweries are there, like Lehe, Põhjala, some, uh, some of these uh, gypsy brewers who don't even have their own breweries uh, yet. All the beers are there. I haven't uh, still found any of the beers I can't check in. Even uh, some uh, Georgian beers that I, I got from a friend were there. They were written in the, it's not even Cyrillic uh, letters, but the local ones and just uh, I was able to match those up. This is just a cool slide. Uh, it used to be a trend like a year ago to have those six, uh, uh, six picture uh, slides. Uh, I wanted to bring it out because uh, this is what really happens. When you do craft brewing, then uh, the main thing that you need to do is uh, you need to keep everything tidy so that uh, no bacteria or, or no uh, bad things get into the beer, so cleanliness is, is really the key of, of getting uh, good craft brews. Um, how much time do you have? Do you have still, like, or what's the planned time frame? Five, ten minutes. Okay, so uh, does anybody have any questions? Yes. Uh, what are your uh, go-to places if you need to buy the ingredients here in Tallinn, or do you order from Tallinn? Uh, uh, I well, I use uh, local shops. There is Brulimine.ie, so Brewing.ie. Uh, there is uh, Brulmeistrit.ie. They are uh, situated on uh, Kotka Street, so it's a little bit closer uh, to our office. Uh, Brulimine.ie is in like far away Mustama and they're open from 10 to 5 so it's really difficult to go to them but uh, they all do sh uh, ship via the smart post and, uh, and uh, ST post uh, uh, those lockers uh, so it's like even and if you buy more for more than like 20 or 30 euros then they ship for free so it's uh, you just need to be prepared a couple of days uh, before you want to actually do the brewing there are more uh, places actually, but uh, these are the two that I use the most. I know Tartu has definitely one uh, shop uh, uh, where to buy these these things. And anyone else? Uh, lady also a question. Ah, yes, sorry. Two questions. Uh, first, uh, do you drink saku and why? And second, uh, where is possible to buy your beer? Uh, it's not possible to buy my beer uh, because I just do it for myself and for my friends. Uh, if you want to uh, sell your beer, there is uh, so many different laws that you have to follow. And uh, the room where you produce it has to be certified and things like that. So I haven't really thought about going uh, into that. I know that uh, uh, 
our small brewers uh, who have started out without their own brewery have done this, uh, so to say, gypsy brewing. So they go to a place where already a brewery exists. Uh, like uh, uh, in Mardu there is Kenika that was used quite a lot uh, before other breweries actually had some spare capacity. Nowadays uh, these gypsy brewers uh, who started uh, as home brewers go to Lehe, go to Põhjala, go to Tanker, they uh, just reserve one of the big tanks, like usually they are around uh, 2000 liters and then they do just one batch uh, brews there. The place is certified uh, and, and so that they get past these uh, uh, laws that they don't have to do it themselves. But I really haven't thought about that. Like I said, I just do it for myself. Uh, regarding Saku, yes, occasionally I drink it. Occasionally I have to, because there's nothing else. <laughs> like yesterday, uh, me and uh, Evgeny back there went to Topcoin uh, and the party that they had consisted of getting two Saku Gold beers uh, after the talks. <laughs> it was okay because uh, most of the people left and I actually got to have like four, but, uh, <laughs> but there was nothing else either and I really wanted to stick around and have a chat with, uh, with the conference visitors and the speakers and uh, I know people start to ease up and speak uh, more friendlier if they have, some, they have a beer in their hand. Yes, of course, you can choose to uh, not take one, but I don't mind. It's not that bad. I mean, I would prefer to have a good craft beer, at least for my first to fifth beer, or, but, but after that, it doesn't really matter. So, but you can still have a try. Uh, you don't have to pay for that uh, here. That's the problem. Yeah, so after, after this talk I understand that I'm allowed to serve my beer for non-commercial uh, 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 like non reasons, or, uh, yeah, so <laughs> anyhow. Uh, Google always helps if you are in need of help, uh, then this guy has written a really good book uh, that is kind of the bible of home brewers. Uh, this is available online. Of course I can't recall the guy's name right now. <laughs> Uh, Estonian stuff, uh, this is me. I usually write like, uh, I don't know, lately five posts per year only. But there is uh, uh, on the sidebar some uh, hints uh, or tips and tricks for uh, starting people. Uh, Alo, uh, who is uh, like the head brewer of uh, Nano uh, uh, Belgulin, uh, a guy from Belgulin, uh, just start, just is finishing right now with actually uh, certifying his own brewery. Has quite uh, a good uh, tips and tricks and technical background how to start. Uh, Tartu Gambrinius uh, is a nice blog where the guy uh, always. Uh, uh, rates uh, every new beer he gets, so all the home brewers and everybody sends uh, their beer to him. And he uh, kind of uh, describes it like the aftertaste and like the overall things and gives a really good uh, honest rating, so you can't really uh, bribe him. If you send a beer, then be ready to be demolished or be ready to be praised. But uh, And this last link, uh, I'll send the slides later uh, via Dev Club uh, website also. This last uh, link is uh, a really good link where all uh, Estonian craft brews uh, are written down on one page by breweries. So there is like Põhjalas long list and Lehe a little shorter list and Ullanaut and all the small ones. Pühaste, sorry, like there is a million. And the brewers maintained themselves? Uh, yes, this is uh, maintained by one of the, also the home brewers. Mm. Yeah, I mean, sorry, Jeff. Yes. Uh, so some breweries they uh, put their beer uh, after fermentation. They put their uh, beer to some barrels, rum barrel or tequila barrel. Yes. For additional taste. So what do you think about that? Uh, uh, this is a good topic. I have mixed feelings about that. I lately went to a wine training where they said that uh, they usually add extra ingredients or put the, the beers inside uh, different types of casks 
to uh, hide away the flaws that have uh, gone into the beer during the process. But I'm not sure that they only do it because of that. I'm, I'm thinking that they occasionally they do it specifically for the taste. So the rum barrel or, or a cognac barrel uh, does add a specific taste. I use uh, French oak barrel pieces <laughs> for my ciders, for example. They, they give a really nice vanilla aftertaste uh, to the apple cider. This uh, cask piece, I mean, they build from the French oak, they build these uh, big barrels for wine or uh, hard liquor or whatever, and then the, what's left of the building, then they just chip it up, they roast it a little, and then sell to home brewers. But it's really convenient. I don't have to buy a real barrel. I can just uh, like take it, uh, <laughs> take as much as I need, and put it into the wort. Um, I guess I have still uh, maybe a minute or two, so I wanted to uh, tell about uh, how brewing is actually connected to development for me. <laughs> I don't have any more slides. It, it, it was just in case I have uh, this spare minute, but. I'm not a developer myself and I don't really uh, know development too well, but I have gone to the university and studied an IT, uh, uh, course, some IT courses and a friend of mine made a temperature, uh, I mean a thermometer for me uh, based on Arduino and uh, it was a really fancy thing and I could, it had three buttons, but the buttons were kind of lacking functionality and then he also gave me this cable as a present and said, just connect it to your computer and do what you want. And for me, it was a really, really great thing to actually write something in C-like uh, language. I don't know how, what's the language exactly called that you use for Arduinos, but... Sorry? Python. Python? No, it's not Python. It was, well, it looked like C. I don't, I don't think I've ever done any Python, but... Anyhow, the, I used the samples uh, in, in the code already on the chip and just remade it, but it was so fancy for me as a non-developer to see that I can actually change something that I have in hand, how it behaves. <laughs> so what do the buttons do now? Then? Sorry, what do? What do the buttons do now? Then? Uh, parents? Uh, buttons. Buttons. Oh, how do you? Oh, yeah. How do you no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, Arduino-based thermometer is uh, so expensive that it's not really competing with uh, commercially made, uh, specially made uh, things, but he was just interested in trying to build something on Arduino and didn't have any pet projects at hand and, and I really needed a thermometer that I can stick into uh, the word that uh, can be boiling and at the same time can be, I don't know, in minus degrees. Well, not beer is not in minus degrees, but if I already get a thermometer then it should be able to do that. But uh, Oh, I see more questions, yeah. yeah. What's up with the t-shirt? What's up with the t-shirt? Yeah, I thought that if my uh, slides and presentations suck, then at least you'll remember <laughs> me about something. <laughs> <laughs> and I really like the t-shirt. Mm -hmm. I leave this long fall of text for you. It's a good old joke, but uh, other than that, I'm kind of done, and I think I'm going to go pour out the beer. And feel free to join me. <laughs>